Now, I've already made a video attacking the dumbness of Atheist Republic, which is the biggest atheist page on Facebook, now with 1.5 million likes. But we can't assume all these likes are organic, since they've obviously invested a pretty penny into promoting their page. In fact, I've seen their sponsored video appear at least a dozen times on my own timeline. So that's what we'll be taking apart today is their sponsored video. I'm actually calling it from their YouTube channel. And it's worth noting that despite being associated with a Facebook page with 1.5 million likes, the videos on their YouTube channel get far fewer views than the ones on my dinky channel. So with that out of the way, let's attack this horseshit. This book is meant to provide to the point and easy to understand counterarguments to many of the popular arguments made for the existence of God. Well then, your book is quite simply mistitled. You could give counter-arguments all day long and still not provide any reason to think that there is no God. Each chapter presents a short and simple explanation of the argument, followed by a response illustrating the problems and fallacies inherent in that claim. As is typical of atheists, they don't understand the difference between an argument and a claim. The tools offered in this book should offer you a solid foundation for building your own inquiry about the concept of God. Well, if the book is titled Why There Is No God, I would guess that it's trying to put the matter to rest once and for all on the side of God's non-existence. It's not trying to build a foundation for a basis for further inquiry, blah blah blah. And while I've not read the book myself, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that this horseshit book marketed towards angry teenagers doesn't actually give you a reason to believe that there is no God. Who is this book for? This book is written for atheists, believers, and the undecided who find the concept of God an important one to examine critically and worth discussing. This book acts as a basic introduction to the debate about God. Again, I don't think a book titled Why There Is No God used to promote a Facebook page is the most reliable introduction to the debate about God. Understanding the Burden of Proof now there's a stretch here where the video makes only reasonable statements, but steal yourself because this thing jumps the rails and when it does... Holy crap! One concept you'll see come up repeatedly in this book is the idea of the burden of proof. During any debate, it's the job of a person making a claim to provide support, evidence, and reasoning for that claim. It simply doesn't make sense to make an unfounded claim with no evidence to back it, and demand that the other person do either agree with you or disprove your unfounded statement. To better understand how the burden of proof works, consider an example by Matt Dillahunty from the Atheist Experience TV show. Imagine that you're given a jar full of beans. You have no idea how many beans are in the jar, but you know that it must be either an even or an odd number. With no supporting evidence one way or the other, however, you could not say for sure whether the jar contained an even or odd number of beans. If you were to claim that it was one or the other, you would need some supporting evidence or a logical reasoning. Otherwise, your claim would simply be a random guess. The burden of proof is a necessary part of any debate, regardless of the topic being discussed. Its utility in facilitating discussion is so well established that it's required in legal proceedings as well. The prosecution must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty. In the case of debates about God, the burden is on the believer to offer support for her position if she wishes it to be considered seriously. Uh, no. In the debate about God, as in all debates, the burden of proof lies with the person who makes any claim. We do not incur the burden of proof by virtue of what we believe, rather we incur the burden of proof by virtue of what we claim to be true. If a person claims that God exists, yes, they have the burden to prove that God exists. If a person claims God doesn't exist, they have the burden to prove that God doesn't exist. If a person claims that there is no evidence for God, they have the burden to prove that there is no evidence for God. I'm going to let you guess which one of these three claims this video simply assumes. In reality, the only necessary argument against believing a god is simply that there is no evidence that any gods exist. <laughs> that is not an argument, that is a claim. There is a difference between an argument and a claim. Just please try to get that through your skull. An atheist doesn't need to justify her lack of belief any further. This keeps the burden of proof on the side of the claimant where it belongs. The person making a claim has to provide the evidence for its validity. Okay, so you claim that there is no evidence for God. Prove that. I'll wait here. Can we say with certainty that there is no God? Atheism exists on a spectrum. Some atheists claim absolute certainty in God's non-existence. Others simply remain unconvinced and refuse to believe in a deity without compelling evidence. Refusing to believe without compelling evidence is a healthy position to take, no matter if one's an atheist or a theist. The issue is whether there is compelling evidence, and of course I happen to believe there is. 
Now, remember when I warned you that this video was about to get really, really, really dumb? You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. However, once one has a high enough level of certainty about something, they usually treat it as certain for the sake of practicality. After all, I cannot say with absolute certainty that my wife is not a professional assassin hired by the People's Republic of China to exterminate me. But I don't spend time worrying about the possibility because there is no evidence whatsoever to support it. The same is true for the existence of God, although my wife being an assassin is actually more likely. That scenario at least would fall within the known scientific laws without contradicting the prevailing models explaining the universe. How can you throw something like that out there and simply expect us to believe you? The existence of God contradicts all prevailing scientific models? Why should we believe you when you say something like that? And how has the supposed scientific disproof of God somehow escaped the notice of all the Christians who are also Nobel Prize winners in physics? And how can God's existence contradict prevailing scientific models even in principle, since God created the universe and created the laws of physics and is not subject to those laws of physics? Oh, and I love these little bullshit probability figures that they apply here, based completely on a non-scientific hunch. The atheist claim to being scientific-minded is a sad, 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 sad joke. Obviously, this is just propaganda designed to strong-arm stupid people into atheism. I beg you to make a habit out of going on Atheist Republic and correcting them on their stupidity. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.